the big ghost tank. We'll keep you in the know. In the big ghost tank. We'll fix your techie woes and we'll break things and we'll make things till we're all together raking and we'll raise a cup of grog down in the big ghost tank. In the big ghost tank. We'll come and join us in the big ghost tank. In the big ghost tank. We'll come and join us in the big ghost tank. In the big ghost tank. We'll come and join us in the big ghost tank. In the big ghost tank. We'll come and join us in the big ghost tank. In the big ghost tank. We'll come and join us in the big ghost tank. In the big ghost tank. We'll come and join us in the big ghost tank. In the big ghost tank. We'll come and join us in the big ghost tank. In the big ghost tank. We'll come and join us in the big ghost tank. In the big ghost tank. We'll come and join us in the big ghost tank. In the big ghost tank. We'll come and join us in the big ghost tank. In the big ghost tank. We'll come and join us in the big ghost tank. Guten Tag, and welcome to episode 059 of the Bilge Tank. Ciao. Ja. Hello. Uh, <laughs> hi. This week is a uh, run through of what these guys got up to at Berlin uh, over the last seven days. Yeah. And, well, eight days. In eight your days, case, yeah. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we always leave someone behind. <laughs> That's the rule. Yeah, oh. one person left behind. It's uh, like a tradition here. Yeah. It's like the o- opposite of leave no one behind. It's basically leave someone is. behind. Yeah, yeah. Draw straws at the airport and then we just tear one ticket up. Yeah. <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> leave them with a five euro note and we just disappear. Yeah, yeah. And that's it. It's See how much entertainment they can get country. in Berlin. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I didn't go. Was it good? Was it awesome? It was brilliant. Well, Last year was really the first one, it was great. This year, step up. Much yeah. bigger this year, yeah? Yeah. It yeah. was massive. We reckon about twice as big. Yeah, walking to our stall, it was like. Da, 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 da. We walk around this kind of curved, massive train station yeah. room. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a, it was a ex post office train station, but a different one from last year. They're moving too fast. Yeah. So, yeah. There was many things on offer, we can't cover all of them, so we're going to cover a few highlights. A few cool things you bought back, trinkets and things. The first one is this. Bob, Bob, so let's, let's do it before it breaks again. Yeah, someone, someone was just asking on chat what the clicking noise was, so we should get <laughs> through this and plug it pretty quickly. <laughs> so Bob, apparently it's really irritating. I want to freehand <laughs> free this. Uh, so this is, these are these little um, oh, kind of flip magnetised flip dot displays, yeah. and there's a little electromagnet for every pixel, and there's a guy who it was like buying the display modules from Poland and made a custom PCB. Yep. And then you put the PCB together and then Phil spent the last three hours debugging it to make it actually work. <laughs> so essentially, these are the same kind of displays that you would get in a railway station um, on the, the kind of arrivals board. Um, and, and that's why traditionally you got that like ripple effect when yeah, it was like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then actually change one row at any one time. Yep. They are pretty sweet. So it's similar to the way that LEDs are row column scanned Except instead of row column scanning them so fast they all appear to be turned on, you have to turn on one at any given time. Yep. And, and then once it's changed. Does it is, it is it like a push pull setup? Is it is the electromagnet uh, essentially giving switching. like a positive a yes. north charge versus a south charge? Yeah, switch and pull out. It seems right. to retain yeah. the charge because once you flip one of these things you can't physically rotate it back. It'll it will spring stay it? in yeah. one one position. Yeah. But then I guess that's the I mean that's kind of the nature of the display. It's quite good for a slowly updating display. Because it the current is presumably immense while it's running quite fast like this. Compared to, compared to an LED, I mean. You reckon 100 milliamps. milliamps. So that's quite well, high for one character on a display. Driving an LED matrix, yeah. you're actually driving all of the LEDs simultaneously, more or less. Not that you're actually driving. Well, it's just so fast, isn't it? You might be driving one row or one column. But like if you imagine display Tron hat with a 16 by 3 display, 100 <laughs> yeah. milliamps per <laughs> character, basically, that would be. Yeah. Something like yeah. five amps to drive the display. Well, the characters so are like big like flippy dots, though. No, I know, no. Big flippy dots. Which does make the, it very cool. It's the but, but, no, but the point is that because it retains the information, you don't need, yeah, you you don't don't need, need to keep refreshing it. it which yeah. is so, so it's got all the advantages of ink. Efficiency. I basically said <laughs> earlier, this is like e-paper, kind of version 0.01. Yeah. Uh, people are saying, please stock those. Oh, my God, I want them. Take yeah. my money. Uh, we're looking into it because they are very cool, but I don't think they really make these anymore. There's there's some stock out there, but... They yeah, are they incredibly might, fragile as well. Yeah, so they're very delicate. Yeah. So we actually, when I... Um, Let's see if I can actually... I think just from being in my, in my suitcase on the way back... Ooh, um, so when I got it, they were in a, a kind of EST resealable bag. Mm-hmm. Um, when I... When we put it together and we were testing it, um, first of all... I'd forgotten that the guy had said to me that two of the pins were um, <laughs> labelled and correctly. So like transposed, yeah. Transposed. Yeah, we know about that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we, f- we fried an Arduino doing that. Oh. Um, once we'd got that sorted out, two of the pixels weren't working properly. Um, and essentially underneath here, um, there are tiny, tiny, as well as the copper coils. Can you get under there, Phil? There are tiny, tiny... Um, it's going to be real. Oh, oh, if you call it exactly parallel to the camera, you'll be able to just see them. Yeah, there's tiny, a tiny, thin, single copper oh, wire. Oh, oh. 
Yeah. Well, literally like yeah. a single core yeah. from a stranded yeah. wire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There we go. Yeah. Can you see that stranded wire at the very top there? Where? Oh, it's there. There we go. Oh, there. yeah. So, okay. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, a single strand of wire basically. Yeah. Mm. And the two of them had snapped. Ah, uh, and that's yeah. why you had two of pixels. Yeah. So yeah. Gotcha. Basically, just gently pushed them back into place. <laughs> Are they wound basically wound from the magnet across to those posts then? Yeah. yeah. And then the post yeah, is the yeah. current carrier essentially, I guess. It's, wow. It's bonkers. That is bonkers. Probably Smart. why they don't make them anymore because they're, like they're delicate and expensive and obviously involve a lot of mechanical components. It has been suggested that we release a clacky fat, <laughs> which <laughs> has a big clacky display on it. They're a bit big, aren't you? They're just slightly, slightly. We should do a tutorial about making these with ping pong balls and electromagnets. Yeah, like a full size ping pong ball one because it's got to be possible. Yeah, same way you paper works. You just put magnetic paint on the ping pong balls. You picked this up for like twenty euros, didn't you? Yeah, which I think is incredible for the amount of moving parts. Yeah, that is insanely good value. It was I think he had a special offer on or something, didn't he? Ah, right, okay. Yeah. Hmm. I think he got a job lot of the flippy dot displays from a factory that was showing down in the middle of Latvia or somewhere. <laughs> go to close, <laughs> go to close at camera four. <laughs> so you can't flip the dots, you can't? Boink. Yeah, so they're basically remaining magnetised. Boink. <laughs> very, very cool. I guess it weakens over time. They probably would, I mean, eventually I guess it'll... So if you held it down, in that place for long enough, it'll probably change the state change, but I'm not sure. Oh, we should got some of those. We've got some really strong magnets. What happens if you pass them over the display? <laughs> like Neodymiums. Yeah. That would be kind of cool. Oh, 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 look at that! Oh, That's awesome. <laughs> if only we had a magnet. If then. only. Ta -da. That is especially cool. That is especially <laughs> cool. interesting how they even maintain their state after being exposed to a ridiculously strong magnet. Well, not that this is especially strong, but I suppose the the magnet in the mechanism is very local, so as soon as you move that magnet away it kind of takes over again, doesn't it? Yeah, I wonder if it's actually flipping a physical magnet inside that plastic bit and that's why it retains, like if it's just mm -hmm. a magnet on a pivot and then it, that's been flipped by another electromagnet. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. I that can't be the see. way it works. Yeah. Very cool anyway, okay. we like it. Yeah, yeah. It's highly likely it's actually. Smart. Because it's hidden inside there, isn't it? Yeah. Totally hidden. Yeah. You should probably find it out at some point, but for now, <laughs> it's just awesome. That'll make it solid state. Cool. And what else did you get, Sandy? Um, so I got myself a thing <laughs> called a Wallet Ninja. This came from like the stall that just had random stuff. So this yeah. was everyone's talking about this stall. It was such stall. a weird stall that Sandy couldn't even figure out if he had stuff for sale. Or yeah, so, <laughs> so, so essentially it was a guy with just a, a table about the size of this, probably, mm -hmm. with hundreds of things laid out on <laughs> it. He's just got a suitcase full of stuff from somewhere in Shenzhen. Yeah. Tipped on the table. Oh, just tactical <laughs> gear, so little, all, yeah, there's, little there's waterproof there's capsules and tactical hair grips and just yeah. all the kind of things like yeah, that. Yeah, he had, he had um, hair, hair clips yeah. that had a saw on them, like a tiny saw on the edge of it, which seems like a really bad idea. He, he cut some wood with it. <laughs> it was very slow, but it worked. Clip in your hair. Whoops. You wake, up in, your hair. You wake up in the morning and half your scalp's been <laughs> sawn off. Oh. It's got a little ball patch. Um, but the hair grip's holding it in. And it had, it had screwdrivers, it had spanners on it. Yeah, a little, uh, little Allen wrench for one size only, yeah. but brilliant. Yeah. So everything on the table was three euros. Yeah, one euro, three euros. You just made up prices pretty much on the spot. <laughs> um, so this was three euros, which seemed really cheap to me. It's like if I was selling that, I would sell it for at least five. Yeah. And then you're making two extra euros. <laughs> and I think, I think he just wasn't good at maths. I, I don't know, but I think anyone would pay that for it because it is quite cool. It's got, um, I think he was just there disseminating it's like cool a trinkety thing from didn't really it's worry good, too much. It's got a ruler on it, it's got a bottle opener, screwdrivers, uh, spanners. I noticed that having um, spent the grand sum of three euros on this, you're leaving it factory sealed in the packet. Hell yeah. Perhaps no, a collector's item. On the <laughs> a little close up, yeah. So I think he's just waiting for you to say, I'd like a thousand of these, please. Yeah, that's how it that's works, the real thing, deal. isn't it? I like the bottle opener. It's the little ninja mask. The mm -hmm. little space. It's cool. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Well, yeah, it's quite nice. I mean, for, for three euros, it's... Uh, yeah. And that, that's worth quite a lot these days. It's yeah. pretty good well, branding and packaging yeah, as well. Yeah, it cost, cost <laughs> me about like 100 quid <laughs> for that. Something like that. Yeah. So if we get this, then we've got, the, uh, we've got the pirate corkscrew, mm -hmm. nin the wallet ninja. Mm -hmm. So we need a monkey thing and a robot thing. Then. Monkey wrench. Yeah, I think. <clears throat> that could work. Yeah. Literal, but... 
Yeah, viable. You can already get monkey wrenches though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just well, why don't we have thing. them? Oh, we have the little Japanese one, don't we? We do have a little monkey spanner. wrench. That's kind of cool. I don't know. What <coughs> cool Technically, what is a monkey wrench? We already have. Robots. Do you have anything else to <coughs> back? Oh, we have bits and pieces. Oh, you made a ring. Sandy made, made a, a ring. ring. Sandy made a ring. I made a ring. I got to play with a feature hammer. That's, that's a very nice ring. That's just lovely, one. this one. That is a really chunky, nice. bad piece of ringage. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, you, often, you often get this as a thing you can do at these kind of events, don't you, at EMF yeah. and stuff? There are these really nice people from the Netherlands, and they, they, they just want you to learn how to make rings. And normally you get a bit of wire. I made two. At EMF camp this year. Mm -hmm. um, this time I got to play with three millimeter sheet um, silver, and I spent about half an hour with a little fret saw cutting a strip out and then battering the shit out of it. <laughs> and then good. finally, they had a hammer with bridges <laughs> on it, and then you hit it and then you turn it 90 degrees and hit it some more, yeah. and that's the effect you end up with. Oh, that's very cool. And that was amazingly therapeutic. Yeah, so I like so it. <laughs> Just uh, hitting metal. Ah, so yeah. therapeutic. There you go. Let's move on. Shiny, yeah. shiny, shiny, shiny. Very shiny. It's really I like good. The kind of beaten look on these. When yeah. the UPS cool. don't turn up, you're like cool as a cucumber. Yeah. Well, yeah. coolish. Hmm. Yeah. Because you've just worked out all the rage on it. Yeah, <laughs> cool. Very nice. Um, we also went to the flea markets, which uh, were on Monday, because Monday was Unity Day, so everyone had the day off, apart from people in restaurants and flea markets. So we had lots of old junk that we'll be trotting out at some point to they're pies in it. They're very popular in Berlin, aren't they? Or in Germany oh. generally, these flea markets. I think so, yeah. yeah. They, they do a lot of cool. stuff in cash, and they do a lot of flea markets, and it's a good culture. So we got ourselves a huge old vault meter. For about fifteen euros, got on the wall somewhere. Yeah, we'll like on the bilge tank. <laughs> yeah. Have you got a really good picture of the inside of the make fair, or is this Twitter image I've got the best one? Oh no, we have a whole video set up. Should we watch some video? Yeah, yeah. we, we can go video. get a cup of coffee and just leave people to watch this really? video for like seven minutes. <laughs> what time are you having your teeth removed? I'm um, having I'm having my teeth removed in about half an hour. If Paul just squeals and disappears out the door, it's because he's off the root yeah. canal. Yeah, I'm off my not not even root canal. They're just taking out the molars. <laughs> They're just like totally dead because they're transplants. Um, and apparently titanium is on the cards. Mm? Um, if anyone out there runs any kind of, or knows any, has any friends in kind of the, the kind of denture replacement stuff and can get like funky stuff done, get in touch. I want to know about it. You should have made your own teeth at the stall at Maker for Berlin. Oh, yeah. You could have, you could have ham, ham tamper. Well, I was looking at the, um, the form too. Form have a new printer with the resin and they have dental resin. So you can make kind of uh, teeth with it. Very cool. Very cool. Amazing. So cool. Anyone out there who can do kind of RFID teeth, GPS teeth, <laughs> teeth with any kind of Duino in them, get in touch with us because we are willing to step up and try this stuff for real. Well, we're willing to try it on Paul for real. Yeah, yeah. Techno pilot <laughs> for the win. IoT. Yeah, IoT. Lovely. Let's watch this video then. Should so this was this um, is inside what used to be the mail station, that as in the a postal different, station. A different post barn um, off. Yeah. We, it's now a convention venue. We should probably warn people that one part of one segment of this, the audio is quite loud. It's much louder than the rest because I had to kind of rapidly edit this this morning, yeah. so I've not had a chance <laughs> to fix the audio. We'll do a proper version, but um, yeah, so maybe turn the sound down a little bit. Yeah, um, but right, we're not going to get sound, are we? So no, I'm going to have no idea what's happening. No. Brilliant. Let's do. We can talk over the top. Right, here we are at Make it Fair Berlin 2016. This is the second year this really has happened, hard. but. They've this levelled up immensely this year. I think the, the venue must be two or three times as big, Station Berlin. And it's awesome, the flow is good, but still, we're just being absolutely swamped by really, really just enthusiastic people. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to walk around and have a chat to some of the other makers here to find out all the interesting bits and just kind of go squee at all their stuff. Um, so, let's go. So yeah, for DJs who get accused of checking their email too much, here is a connected glove and uh, mixing the music just with it as you can. And you can't be accused of not doing enough work there if you're on stage. More cowbell! It was actually another cowbell. And here we have the R2 Builders Club. Um, these are just immense, beautiful machines. And hopefully we might get a look at the rig they used to control this because they have the full kind of neck, iPad, full remote control thing going on. Um, so we'll see if we can take a look at that. It's a bag, it's a bag. 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 It's a b
need to work too deep. That is a super cute little thing. You need to look up. <laughs> That's super cute. Serious big piece of knitted. Okay, so we've had a little break, we've changed t-shirts and we come back for the Sunday of Make Fair Berlin. It's been a little quieter, but it's picking up now. I think people wanted a bit of a lie-in on Sunday morning. And um, we're going to take a bit of a look around the rest of Hall 3 and then see the bits of Hall 1 we didn't see yesterday. So, let's go see Make Fair Berlin! Woo! So here are my favourite people. Every time I see them at EMF camp or Make Fair Berlin, I, I make another ring. So you go, there's Dan and Emmy there, and they teach you how to make a ring yourself. You do everything yourself. Thank you. They give me some special soy sauce. But apparently, I, 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 should, I should not drink this. But uh, yeah, this is used to tarnish the silver and make it into a cool kind of... Ah, yeah. I was a little bit worried. Right, yeah, but not soy sauce, do not drink. And it's a standby for make fairs that they must have at least one installation that's beautiful but slowly drives you insane if you're near it. <laughs> and this year it seems to be this one which is just a beautiful piece that's based on... It's an old, yeah, it seems to be an old Roland kind of synthesizer that made real, real instruments. And it's this kind of thing we invoked with the drum hat. But this is much bigger and more interesting. So that's about half the stuff that Sandy prepared. Um, Very good. Nice. We showed like three or four of the hundred or more <coughs> exhibitors that were there. Um, mm. Pretty cool stuff. You said it was busy. I was getting photos back from you guys, and it was like yeah, three deep at the stall, and stuff. <laughs> it was pretty much always three deep. It was yeah, we got on pretty well. Um, so the little bottle of stuff um, that was actually used for blacking up. So you see the ring is quite black. Um, polish some of that okay. um, liver of sulfur on. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and what that does is reacts with the silver to create a silver oxide. Um, blackens up the ring. You get it over time anyway, or if you get an egg near your silver. Mm -hmm. it's in, um, yeah, it's yeah. essentially the same process when sulfur tarnishes. So if you have like sulfur <laughs> cutlery or whatever, you know, if you leave it for a few years and don't use it, then it will go that kind of black and. But this lets you tarnish it more quickly. Yeah, so yeah. That kind of aged effect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's sort of like tiger, tiger finish on that, oh, doing nice. it, and then it rubs away on the surface mainly. So yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 A bit of texture, a bit of color. So a bit of chemistry there. But you've got you've got a bottle of it to redo it if you want. Yeah. <laughs> but it's readily available, just don't mix it with acid because yeah. you get some nasty gases. Or drink it. Mm. Or drink it. Or put it on your sushi. Yeah, it'll, it'll react with your stomach acids and <laughs> make uh, nasty, things. nasty stuff. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Very nice. Cool. Um, you got a couple of links this week? Yep. So, um, so Sorry, so that video, you're going to finish prepping it and yeah. tidy the audio up a bit. And yeah. We're going to get it online yeah. at yeah. some point soon. Just do that properly. Yep. Yeah. So we saw this Kickstarter, which is well over, well over funding. It looks kind of cute, well very expensive. But, um, well, it, the um, materials are good. The Plum Geek guy who does it. He's got kind of a good track record in doing kind of simple things, charging a decent amount for them, but mm -hmm. then delivering pretty well, I think. So he's got he's done previously done kind of um, vibrate vibration bots. Some prices. What is it? I think it was like $189. He really doesn't seem that keen to us, but his market <laughs> obviously disagrees because it's like three times overfunded. Does it include the pie? It doesn't, doesn't include the pie or right. the camera or the pan tilt head like or the, the really basic kit contained. So it's kind of this wing, wing thing and mm -hmm. custom PCBs. It's so adorable. It yeah. is very cute. <laughs> and it's, got, it's got nice little things like it shines light into the ultrasonic yeah, capsules. How's he done that? <laughs> Just shines them from below. Oh right, yeah. But well, seemingly wow. there must be um, holes <coughs> drilled in the cans, or they must be semi-transparent <coughs> somehow. I thought those were metal cans. I think they tend to be a mesh, don't they? Oh, well, around be. the side. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, Possibly. You might be right if it's a mesh. Might I thought it, was or just it might a just be a finished plastic or something. But yeah, we'll find or it out. Might just right. drilled an hole. Oh, How have you made the yeah. eyes glow like that? <laughs> so that's kind of cute. Uh, it, it claims, well it's Raspberry Pi and it kind of claims learn Python, learn Arduino, presumably the board itself yep. is Arduino compatible and obviously backpacks onto a Pi for the 
It does look finished. fairly uh, fairly rover like as well. It has yeah. finished sensor or something as well, isn't yeah. it, mate? Mm-hmm. Whole cluster of sensors you can attach on the bottom and then uh what is it? Uh, accelerometer mm-hmm. and um, a gyroscope on board, I believe. Everything All you the need things you need for kind for of a bit of moon exploration. <laughs> moon exploration. <laughs> at home. Cute. Moon exploration in the safety of your home. Nice one. Cool. And we got the Pie in the Sky Zero kit. And this cool. is for the yep. kind of high altitude balloon logging. So all the stuff, stuff that Dave it? Aikman does. Um, is available from the company that was Hab Supplies. They had to change their name because of some trademark wranglements. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody else registered Hab Supplies as a trademark. They missed the opportunity to um, oppose it. And so they just changed their name. So it's the same company that uh, Dave Aikman stuff all comes out on. They tested this out with the Morph in Space stuff. Mm-hmm. So if you look at the Morph in Space videos, which are underneath the YouTube video, there's a link there for them. Um, this is what they used on that. They used the prototype on that. And this is now the full thing. And it's got the um, LoRa radio. It's got the, um, what do you call it? Radio metrics. Radio metrics radio one, which thing. is more for the console type stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, RTTY. Yes. All oh, right, so this gives you like a really long range but very low bandwidth. So that's your telemetry. Yeah. And then you've got the LoRa for kind of just shifting image More data and things like stuff that. type things, yeah. Cool. Yep, and it's got the GPS and it comes with Zero. Oh, so does it? It's all oh, bundled right. okay, in. Sweet. Yeah, I'll let you stay, mate. Come on. And there's um, some sort of, there's a power regulator on there as well so that you can power yep. this off batteries. A couple and of pigtails to the antennas. If you, you just have to buy a Massive balloon. <laughs> to helium? A massive balloon and some <coughs> hydrogen actually. Hydrogen. Yeah, helium small small in short supply. Oh, so they, they, they mess with hydrogen, um, don't smoke around it. No. <laughs> um, generally doesn't explode by and large. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a bad reputation due to some historic incidents, but it's a lot harder to set fire unless you're you're a bit of a muppet, I think. That's cool. Yeah. Not cheap. But then not I suppose cheap, if you're sending no. things to space, budgets have to be increased. You yeah. Know, not unreasonable. Well, if you've got this radio here that's 40 quid, you've got the GPS that's mm. another 20, you've got the board, you've got the other radio, it all adds up pretty yeah, quickly. As soon as you get into GPS and radios, the price goes up. And given it? I think they've got they've got six in stock at the moment, mm-hmm. so it's not as if they've made hundreds, Low so the price runs. will be quite high. But it's a, it's a really neat solution. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And Dave knows what he's doing. So yeah. That's always good. Cool. If you're looking at the knitting as well on the video, um, this was done by Victoria at the ETIB Berlin. Um, she is kind of the Berlin queen of hacked knitting machines. Mm. She's got a workshop with about 10 of them. We raved about it a bit last year. I remember. But she yeah. was back this year and she got three three bookmarks, three of the Maker of Merit bookmarks. So she was just swamped by kids all day learning how to machine knit with a hacked knitting machine. Is this one of the ones where you actually move the truck back yeah, and forth yourself? Yeah. That's quite cool. Yeah. We got a maker of merit. Yeah, we should have bought it in. We here. got another one. Yeah, oh, we well. need to. We got one. It's we nice. need to line them all up at some point because <laughs> we've got them from, oh. I think, pretty much everywhere. But Shenzhen, where we only had a little display, is it still one that's way back in the boxes? Uh, that? Or did no, it's it on Emma's desk. Was oh, it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. She, she won't let go of it. She <laughs> held on to that. Yeah. Nailed to Emma's desk. <laughs> and James, who was next to us, big thanks to James from Raspberry Raspberry Jam Berlin. Definitely. Yeah. Helped us out so much, did a good display, and got his own bookmark again this year. He's always so awesome. Way, so he's now two for two as well. And a uh, big thank to our German customer support dude, Stefan, yeah. who helped us out, because Stefan's based in Berlin, so it was a great chance for him to come and spend some time with the team. And yeah. It was a refreshing change having someone speak from us. German. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, so that was awesome as well. You can see a spread of people. Yeah. yeah. You can see uh, a picture of our stall here, so this was... Uh, kind of our setup, and we had obviously lots of really colourful, um, playful um, things, and there was yeah. a lot of demos of the stuff as well. Flashy so lights. This is what we do: we kind of talk about stuff, so, give people advice, just kind of, just talk to them about stuff, yeah. and that's, yeah. it's really kind of rare in a way. And there's there's not actually many candy shops shops there. There's people selling their own thing, like the Flippy Dot things, mm-hmm. and there there are kind of big brands who have their can demo, yeah. and it's all a bit kind of. Uh, I don't know, it's, it's a bit corporate in many ways. I think like I fix it do it well. Yeah. They do it properly. And Dremel. But there's there's nobody Dremel. Yeah. But there's nobody who kind of has that kind of that craft fair thing like we do. Yeah, I, I think we try and 
take like a, a lot of kind of fun, reasonably priced stuff. It's kind of like yeah. a trinket you can take away on the day or whatever, and we can show you how it works or talk to you about it or yeah. you know something you can just pick up a project for that weekend, mess yeah. around with whatever. So. Not, I used to I used to go around a lot of craft fairs as a kid. Loved doing that. Learned how to do things like make earrings or whatever random thing was there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just get a bit of pocket money, start a new hobby. And yeah, it's always nice to do that. Get we, started. We did it's some cool. uh, under the counter pie zero trading, didn't we? <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. El illicit pie zero. We took. It wasn't even illicit. It's just they're so hard to get in Europe. Yeah. We do our best with the shipping, but the shipping is always going to seem very large in contrast to the price of a pie zero. Yeah. Um, it was nice to take some and sell it was them. Nice to, yeah, people kind of were there and they said, "Okay, you've got pie zeros. Can I have a hundred, please?" No. <laughs> It, but if it's kind of like, hello, I, I'm here with, with my orphan child, could I have two? We kind of, sometimes we got a bit soft-hearted. Hey, yeah, if there's two people. Yeah, Yeah, there was a guy, with, uh, uh, a guy with an incredibly cute little child who said, can I have two pie zeros? And we said, it's one per customer. And he said, oh, well, can my, can my child have one? Can my small child, yeah. <laughs> Was this the <laughs> one with the cash, dummy who no got problem. the... Call the captain sticker. I think it was a different one. <laughs> that's all that. Yeah. I saw that come up on yeah. Twitter. Yeah. Very good. But that's a few hundred more Pi Zeros. And we did a soldering workshop with them as well, which that went was pretty well. Phenomenally Very popular. Cool. I wonder why. Let's <laughs> um, try and wrap this up in five minutes because you've got to go, man. I've got to go. So yeah. Let's yeah. kill the um, overlay and just quickly look at these new, boards. New products. Got. What boards have we got? Oh, we have got um, Automation Hat came out. Uh, what, um, sorry. Oh, wrong wrong one. Uh, Automation Hat came out. Three, four weeks ago, whatever. I mm -hmm. uh, can't remember exactly, but we have a fat version coming soon. Sure. So it's pretty so. much the same um, same concept. You don't get <coughs> Look at uh, obviously a few wise. features because you can't fix fix it, uh, fit it on there. But you get a single relay. Uh, you get you still get three syncing outputs, three buffered inputs, and three talker yeah, ADC yeah. channels. Um, so super super useful. I think it's going to be about twelve pounds. Can't remember exactly. Right. So it's a cheaper, okay. smaller version. Yeah. Pretty, pretty sweet. Yep. Um, we also have a, another fat coming, which is the moat fat. So this is to use with our moat sticks. And we also have new sticks coming, which I don't know if we've got in here, but we, we've got pure white and mixed RGB white moat sticks coming. For your pastels. For your pastels. Well, the, yeah, the mixed ones are great if you want just like a hint of a colour into something. And it, you know, it's still quite strong, but it's much yeah. more natural for lighting effects mm -hmm. um, rather than kind of zany rainbows. Sweet. Uh, and this is just a way to connect it directly to the Pi. Uh, again, it's a little bit cheaper than the USB host because it doesn't need to have a microcontroller on there. So. Yeah, but only Pi Zero. Well, only Pi. Only especially Pi. good for the Pi Zero. And great for Pi Zero. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then finally, we have a hat coming soon, which is the Pi Cade hat. And um, this will be an alternative way to build a Pi Cade. If you're using a Pi, it's a little bit more convenient than using our current board. Yeah, dun, 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 dun. and this basically integrates all the IOs for doing um, kind of arcade style um, setups on a Pi, but as well as that, we've included a single speaker connector. Now that actually takes the I2S audio from the Pi, blends the two channels into a single mono signal, yep, and then amplifies it into a, th a three watt amplifier basically out on those um, screw terminals. So you get like an integrated amplifier with the digital audio as well, which is pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. And it also has a soft power feature. So you can hook up a button that you can press to cleanly shut down the Pi. It sends a GPIO signal that causes the Pi to do a shutdown. And then once the Pi shut down, you can press the button again to actually start it up. So cool. it, it gives you a way to externally mount a power switch onto your uh, arcade project. Which sweet. Is pretty sweet. So yep. watch out for those over the next few weeks. Now it's going to be a little bit cheaper than the Pi-Cade full board. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's going to be quite a lot cheaper than the full board. But it doesn't do the USB, but it's great if you're just going to use a Pi. Yeah, so this normally Pi-Cade controller is a USB head device. So yep. this one you have to run a driver on the Pi that basically listens to the GPIO changes and then generates the uh, input events yep. for the for the uh, you know console, the emulator. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just a slightly different approach, but yep. yeah, much cheaper. And all of these are either going to be in black or I think the Pi-Cade one we're going for purple and white, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Are we? Yeah. I don't know. You tell me. Well, purple and yellow, I don't know. I just think I'd go crazy. We'll find out. Yeah. But I think if you've seen the Pike A purple, mm -hmm. riff off that. Because the Pike A board's always been a bit more interesting. Yeah, from the motor. Oh, Flotilla. Flotilla. Yes. <coughs> okay, Flotilla. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. What okay, can okay. I say? You said Pike A. Okay. But that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like a melding of the red and the blue Pike A boards. Yeah. Yeah. They're coming together. Cool. Um, and it's obviously a hat. So you know what yeah. to expect there? So I think that's everything for this week. That is everything for this week. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Don't forget yeah. to like, 
subscribe, comment, uh, comment. Ah, on Facebook. Ooh, Facebook too. Yeah, because yeah. we've got yeah. a whole Facebook thing going on. See you later, Thanks, folks. everyone. Bye. Bye.